Well, right now, unfortunately, the the debt limit negotiations are at an impasse. Still, uh, they they appear to be making some progress. They are talking, but there's no deal yet. So that means we're still in limbo. We're not sure what's going to happen or when it will happen. Uh, and so small businesses start to prepare and worry about it. So we've got to stay on on our toes and remind our legislators and our public officials that they need to reach a deal um, and uh, and be paying attention to this. The potential for defaulting on the debt specifically is, is a major concern for the small business community for a few reasons. Um, I'll start at the, uh, the big picture. One is just the overall uh, economic impact. That could have a very significant jolt to the economy and small businesses will get hurt first. Uh, second, and, 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 and probably the most immediate concern to most small companies is what's going to happen to credit and capital markets. We, we've never done this before, so we're not sure. We know it won't be a good thing, but we, we're already in a in a world of, of tightened uh, credit and tightened capital and tightened ability of small companies to get loans. And so uh, uh, we're, we're going to see those, uh, we, th we think, further restricted, uh, maybe quite dramatically uh, in, the, in the short term. Um, and then finally, for a very specific class of companies that, uh, that that do business with the federal government, they have significant worries about even getting paid. Because uh, what happens when the government, what's, what would happen if we, if, if we hit the debt limit, basically is the government no longer has the ability to borrow money to pay its bills. So they're not going to shut down. But the Treasury Department is going to have to decide which bills are we going to pay today exactly. And I, I will guarantee you that the typical small business contractor is at the bottom of that list uh, to get paid. And so th those companies have employees, they have capital outlays, they've got to stay in business, and they cannot depend on the federal government paying those, those, uh, th those bills. And it's going to have a, a devastating impact on those companies. six months things have changed a lot in the lending arena for small business there's more direct influence of regulators it's apparent when you're having conversations with the banks the banks are being forced to have conversations with their borrowers uh, part of that was that during the lockdown the regulators were either ignoring absent or had a light touch on the banks and now three years have evolved and things have changed and they're coming in and demanding things of their borrowers that are surprising the borrowers because they haven't been asked those things and they've been going on for a couple of years. Uh, the quality of the banks right now are very concerned. Obviously, we're worried about bank runs with their assets. Mm -hmm. What most people don't realize is a bank's assets are not its deposits, it's its loans. So the regulators are being particularly tightening down on the credit quality of what they're willing to approve. That affects new borrowers. But increasingly, looking at the existing borrowers and they feel they've deteriorated. I'll give you one example. Many, many small businesses secured an idle loan. It was a lifesaver for them. But suddenly the bankers are doing what they call a debt to worth for how much debt worth you have, what do you have in debt? Important ratio for them. And they're finding these people have just jumped. They all of a sudden have this huge amount of leverage. And they're very concerned about that. And the borrowers are saying, well, we did what you told us to. You offered us the idle. It's 30 years, low interest. But it affects this debt to worth ratio. And the regulators are looking at that. Regulators are forcing banks they add back the money that borrower that companies use to pay their payroll protection to pay their employees, but they're not adding back the payroll. So suddenly they look like they were underwater. Many of them would not have kept those people on their payroll had it not been for payroll protection. Number of those strategies that the regulators are now forcing them to do in conversations I've had with some bankers, the regulators are not just breathing down their backs. They've moved in, they're setting up in their offices, and sometimes they're there on a daily basis, not a once a year basis. So it's a different world out there because the regulators are deeply involved in forcing the banks to enforce things that might be in their credit policies, but that they haven't for three years. And it's much more difficult for not only new borrowers, but existing borrowers. The impact on small business, particularly, consider this. Remember, banks are in the risk business. That's what they do. They're the risk and mitigate business. So way if we have a default, even this hovering potential of a default, is heightening the risk on everything. It's looking at what may happen to the bank's investments, to their borrowers, which are their assets, their loans, their funding, uh, their ability to get paid if they're a government contractor, uh, their ability of their customers to pay, pay them. Um, everything now, the risks are simply intensified with not only a default, but with even the threat of one, the risks have substantially intensified. Small business is 
but as many people know, it's small, right? That's a given that's in our name, but there are enough of us to have a tremendous impact on this country. The volume of employees that we employ, the work we do, what we provide, how we stabilize the economy and provide innovation. We are already on the front lines of taking risk, trying to comply with everything that's going on. So when anytime there's a great deal of uncertainty with the government, particularly on the financial side, that only heightens our fears, our concerns, causing people to pull back. They're reluctant to make that acquisition, open that new market. They don't know what to expect. And when that's coupled with the banks applying even greater scrutiny on them, that could cause them to be to paralyzed. Even if this impasse passes in a couple of days, it's gonna take a while before we shake this feeling of we don't know what's around the corner. And you get a group of, and small business as a group could severely impair this country if they begin to have a fear to move forward. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Marilyn. I, I don't think policymakers in Washington really understand how big an impact uncertainty has on, on small companies, especially when they're trying to do business. Um, I mean, right now, especially when the threat of uncertainty is, is around their ability to get uh, credit from their banks, for instance, because uh, I've talked to businesses that are that are sort of marshalling their cash and maybe they're not taking advantage of opportunities they might otherwise uh, take advantage of because they don't want to overextend because they're not sure what tomorrow is going to look like. Um, that affects all of us because that's the other thing that I think not enough policymakers understand is that small businesses borrow money when there's a chance for them to grow, when there's an opportunity. Um, and if, if they are... Uh, letting those opportunities go by because their perceived risk is, is higher now because of gamesmanship in Washington, that's a tragedy for all of us. 